Okay, um, so good evening, uh, gentlemen. Uh, thank you for making it to this call. Uh, today is a historic moment, um, which which we are capturing right now by recording this uh, conversation, um, which which actually would not have been possible um, yesterday. But before we explain the significance of, of this day uh, for Santa Lina, could you perhaps just uh, quickly introduce yourselves, uh, maybe Carl? First. Okay, so um, my name is Carl Thrower. Um, I'm a councillor um, on Centralina, uh, which is a British Overseas Territories in the South Atlantic. And I'm also a tech entrepreneur. So um, I also do things like install CCTV systems, sell laptops, divisions and all that, and generally just help people with their computer and IT needs. And uh, I'm Andrew Turner. I'm formerly a journalist um, on St. Lena, now also a member of the St. Lena Legislative Council. And uh, yeah, a bit of a tech nerd, so very happy with today. Excellent. Um, thanks. Uh, and maybe a brief introduction for myself. Um, my name is Christian von der Opp. I'm a telecom slash satellite uh, consultant, uh, and you know me as a long-term supporter of St. Lena almost uh, 12 years ago. I launched a non-profit grassroots campaign to uh, bring a submarine cable to the island. Um, so we're having a three-way video call right now, something pretty useful for most people around the world um, and with pretty decent quality, although I'm right now in uh, Mauritius, so I'm not the right reference connection, um, but um, quality is good as I said. So. Uh, this has only become possible this morning. Um, what happened, Carl? Okay, so um, quite a few months ago now, um, a new submarine cable was finally lit up, um, which links the island onto Google's Equinano cable. Um, this was then put on to our current uh, method of delivery, which is um, a copper-based ADSL2 system. So today is actually the first time, since midnight last night is the first time, the islands actually had use of that new submarine cable. Um, and to give people an idea of the changes, we've gone from paying um, about £186 a month for a two megabyte connection with a 31 gigabyte um, limit on it um, to paying, I'm currently on a 120 pounds a month package, which now gives me a 20 megabyte connection and a unlimited download. So this is actually the first time the island's had an unlimited internet connectivity for, available for anybody. Right, and um, and this is why you, you finally have the, the bandwidth, the capacity, not only for a three-way video call, but, but actually for videos, video calls at all, right? Yes, that's correct, yeah. Um, so obviously um, the, the upload speed is important for the video calls as well. So we've just gone up from 0.7, which was a real problem for video calls, up to a one megabyte system. But the important thing to say is the, the Equinon cable we actually have a 10 gigabit connection to the cable. Um, so also, as we go through it, upgrading our networks, um, we have plenty of um, connectivity there to be able to fully utilize later on. So th this, is, this is a, a boost by, by an order of magnitude. Um, um, and you, you mentioned you're using ADSL2 right now, which I think maxes out somewhere above 20 megabits if you're you know, next door to the exchange. Um, what, what, what did you get before? I mean, um, um, that was somewhere around a megabit or two, you said? Yeah, so my, uh, my personal data from home was um, about 1.8 megabits um, download. And also the other thing was the ping was enormous. Um, it could go up to 600. Um, this morning I've been doing quite a few tests and from pretty much first thing this morning, that speed went from uh, 1.8 to up to roughly 17. Um, and my ping dropped by nearly a quarter, um, down to 145. It's currently running at to Google UK. Andrew, you see so similar speeds? Change. Sorry, Andrew, you do. Sorry, Andrew, do you see similar speeds? Yes, so I'm. I'm actually on the, the the slightly slower package to Carl, so I'm getting speeds actually right now of about 8.6 megabytes per second, which is 
uh, eight times faster than we've ever had at this house before, bearing in mind I live in a very isolated rural area with about half a kilometre of cable between me and the nearest house, never mind the nearest um, piece of shore equipment. <laughs> okay. So I guess the, the difference in your bandwidth is, is due to the length of the, of the copper line uh, between the next exchange and your home, um, which means high attenuation, hence, hence low bandwidth, uh, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes, but even at these slower speeds, the difference is phenomenal. I mean, we're, as I say, we're able to video call like this, which has never been possible uh, from this house before. My wife has a family in South Africa, and you know, even just to, to talk to them for uh, half an hour or so, you know, you get very little conversation in, in between all the delays and the lag. Yeah, I well remember being hardly able to uh, even... Uh, have a voice call over the internet um, during peak hours just because it was um, so congested. Um, but I mean, this is now you know a huge leap for the island. Um, nevertheless, you know, compared to what we have uh, in Europe, uh, in North America, other parts of the world, um, this is still comparably low. Actually, in some nations, it no longer. Uh, meets the definition of broadband. Mm -hmm. So um, I think Carly mentioned 10 gigabits uh, of capacity have been provisioned. I know that um, the international capacity, so the wavelength from St. Helena to Portugal is 100 gigabits capacity. That's the That's correct, smallest yes. um, the smallest unit you can get, technically get on a submarine cable, um, which, which means you're sitting on a huge pile of capacity on the island. You have four and a half thousand uh, people there, uh, which means that you have like 22 megabits per capita. Um, if everyone had internet access, if everyone used it simultaneously, um, but if you consider that this won't happen and that you typically apply what's called oversubscription on a, uh, a telecoms network, um, you could easily even with a very con con um, conservative oversubscription factor, you could easily uh, deploy a gigabits of of uh, capacity, couldn't you? Yes, that's that's right. I mean, um, even if you look at the the lower contention ratios, which are the standard around the world, you would still have enormous capacity. Um, and of course, um, the four thousand five hundred is the, our complete um, population. So that's including newborn babies up to um, severely old pensioners. <laughs> Um, so I would say that the chance of anybody using it, I mean, it is, I mean, it, it's a, um, it's a massive change, you know, the, the hundred gigabyte capacity, um, we got this and the, this, most of the cable project was funded by the EDF 11 trench funding, um, which is from the European Union. Um, and the full cost of the actual cable was, was paid for from that. So that was a fantastic funding that we got. Um, it's not a moral obligation to the island for that, um, but a legal obligation to the European taxpayer who paid for those, who's obviously paid for that at the time. Um, and I think that's a very significant change for us, um, you know, and I certainly hope that we manage to utilize that funding properly. Yeah, um, I couldn't agree more. So um, not only as a supporter of St. Helena, but also as the EU taxpayer who certainly contributed a few cents to, I think it was 21.5 million euros that were awarded to the island in 2018 to lend the cable and buy that yeah. capacity, this wavelength uh, to Europe and also one to, to South Africa. Um, speaking of coast, um, so you mentioned already you were paying 180 pounds per month for your previous... Um, yeah, I think it was actually 186. 86. And that gave you yeah. uh, 32 gigabytes of monthly traffic? Yeah, thir sorry, 31 gigabytes of monthly traffic at a maximum speed of 2 megabytes. What happened after reaching the 31 gigabytes? Well, you in the early days, you basically started paying a ridiculous amount per megabyte. Um, and then only, I think it was about 18 months to two years ago, you were allowed to buy what they referred to as a booster package. So once you went over your megabytes, you could actually buy another similar package or a lower package to cover your extra megabytes. Um, so it was quite complex. There was lots of backwards and forwards on it. Um, but it, it's, it's really good to see. And obviously that 186 pounds was not affordable um, for most people on the island. You have to remember on the island, the average salary is only 8,600 pounds. 
Um, per so year. paying nearly two thousand pounds per year. Yeah. So paying twenty five percent of the average income just on your internet, which has also got a ten percent service charge on it, um, was a little bit ridiculous. Um, and it only gave you thirty one gigabytes. You couldn't even download. I worked out how much it was going to cost me to download a, one of the newer computer games the other day. It would have cost me over three hundred pounds. So I could buy the game for ten ninety nine, but I would have to pay three hundred pounds to be able to download it. Unbelievable. I think we lost Andrew for a second. Now back here. Um, back again. Yeah, I, I guess the fact that there's no more uh, data limit and there are no extra charges for exceeding that, that data allowance um, is, is a huge relief for you guys, isn't it? Absolutely. Is, um, well, one of the things it's gotten rid of, of course, is that, that fear of the shock bills, which I think has really hindered people wanting to adopt sort of internet connectivity in the past obviously St. Cleaner is not in the best financial state and you know I can't mention the average salary there but of course the cost of living here is about three times what it is in the UK um, on average so you've got to think you've got to make that much smaller salary go much further and with you know you cannot risk sometimes people having a, a you know three four hundred pound overage charges in a month so many people just decided they weren't going to have internet or talk at all or they would get a pay-as-you-go mobile plan yeah plus a lot of people uh, disabled automatic updates um exposing themselves mm -hmm. to cyber threats because you know they were running an yeah. outdated um exploited mm -hmm. software version so yeah um mm -hmm. so um and, and you're saying now everyone has uh Unlimited internet access, like unlimited data allowance? So not everyone will have it now. There are still capped data packages available. Um, but the two highest tier ones, that I think it's the £63 and £120 a month package are uncapped data. One of the big differences now with the packages, though, is that when you go over your mega allowance you don't run over as charges um, you will simply be cut off until you buy a booster which although not ideal is still better than that that shock bill coming at the end of the month that people simply weren't able to afford to pay in a lot of yeah um, I would I would say it's still um, odd that you have um, data allowances even if it's only on the lowest packages because um, the um, I don't, cost is indeed the international capacity so the submarine cabling to europe which which was gifted uh, to the island by the european union covered by those 21.5 million uh, euros um let's let's see and hope that there will be improvement um but the commercial questions aside um what can be done for people you know who live far off from um, the exchanges that have these long copper lines and um, uh, as a result low bandwidth uh, and who have no hope uh, for fiber in the foreseeable future um, because you know they're just too far from the from the backbone mm. yeah it's obviously the the big risk in all of this project is that isolated rural areas such as the ones i represent will always be last in line for fiber to the home connectivity. We're harder to reach, we're more expensive to reach, there's fewer people, fewer businesses, um, you know, the, the more populated areas will always be a priority. There are systems such as Starlink, such as, as OneWeb, and I believe there are a few other sorts of um, satellite providers like that in the works that do work out here and, you know, could, could represent a very good interim solution. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I understand, and um, I hope that that Santalina government uh, will find a way to, you know, find the right technology mix and leverage all these exciting new technologies and um, to basically close the digital divide. Now um, that you have all this capacity on on your doorstep, um, and uh, yeah, that this you know digital divide which has moved you now it's now no longer between the island and the outer world, but on the island. Uh, we'll close close soon. So um, you, you mentioned OneWeb. Um, now the, the OneWeb gateway on on Saint Helena is is obviously not operational yet. Um, what, what I think mm -hmm. is is remarkable is that um, it is it is satellite operators, uh, most notably OneWeb, that facilitated the funding for the submarine cable from the European Development Fund. Um, 
because uh, yeah, back in, in 2015, UK government actually considered funding the cable, uh, but the concern was how would be the uh, yearly operations and maintenance um, charges be covered, which which are significant, um, the six digit. Um, and uh, yeah, luckily we, we discovered back then that there was a strong interest from the satellite industry to locate ground stations, uh, satellite ground stations on the island, which um, would lease a significant amount of, of capacity on the submarine cable uh, to carry the data downloaded or uh, to the island basically back to Europe or wherever they are headquartered and needed. Um, so, um, yeah, it was basically satellite operators that, that uh, uh, tipped the balance and, mm. and facilitated um, uh, the cable landing uh, prior to actually deploying any service, right? Yeah, you know, um, Chris and obviously we, we spoke many years ago um, about your, your involvement in this. And, of course, that was originally your idea. Um, and of course, it's great to see the, the fruit of that labor now now coming on, you know, and it certainly tipped the balance um, of the funding decision um, from the EU. Um, OneWeb is already building a large ground station um, and that planning permission went through. Um, it will become the single largest user of the bandwidth of the island at the moment. Um, I say at the moment, um, hopefully future proofing a little bit in case somebody else comes. Um, but um, I think that it, it will basically it'd be a fantastic opportunity for us because also with it obviously it brings a huge amount of skills that we don't currently have on the island you know and that's one of the things also about being a remote uh, such a remote island um so you know um it's fantastic for us um and at the same time our contribution to help co you know connect in the world you know when we're in a remote location not only as an island but also the the um the marine area around the island um, so also there's lots of yachts in that tr transit, you know, we're on the, the traditional trade winds. Um, so I, I think nobody can really underestimate um, the position of Sensina for helping him with that, you know, and of course your involvement with it as well from the beginning. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's, um, thank you for that. And by the way, it wasn't my ideally precisely, but uh, there, there was a pre precedent and that's Svalbard, a Norwegian island, which got a submarine cable just to get um, a satellite ground station connected there. So um, I don't, uh, uh, take any uh, laureates for that. But um, yeah, it's indeed interesting how uh, St. Helena uh, until yesterday was basically a terminus in the global, you know, internet topology. And now, uh, you know, overnight it uh, is becoming a, a hub connecting all these uh, constellations to, to the global um, uh, submarine cable network. Um, mm. Yeah, it, it almost feels a bit like history essentially repeating itself. You know, St. Helena was a hub in the days of the East India Company and the British Empire. And of course, let's not forget, it was uh, a central part of the, um, I believe it was called the All Red Line Telegraph System, affectionately known as the Victorian Internet. And it's yeah, it's now sort of resuming its role as a, a, a strategic outpost in the age of digital technology. It can now become a hub between all of these, these various satellite systems and the global submarine cable network. So speaking of, of digital technologies, um, what opportunities do you see what, uh, that, that will be unlocked now with this uh, you know, bandwidth and availability of unlimited internet access, at least for some? I think, um, Christian, it, it's very difficult for people who um, come from the Western world and are so used to it, um, just how much of a change this is for us. So, you know, um, the way that we see this most is um, when we travel. So, you know, if you go to London now, the underground, it's all tap and pay. We have no tap and pay. Um, in fact, at the minute, there are only two or three locations where you can actually use a visa card on the island. You know, we have our own banking cards, which don't have tap and pay. Um, there's no chip and pin here. Um, so banking is amazing. And for somewhere that's going into tourism, that's significant. But one of the biggest changes will be in, because of our remoteness, we rely very heavily on overseas medical aid. Um, you know, that's when we refer people overseas for medical aid. So telemedicine is one of the real big changes here. So normally what we do is because obviously we have a very limited um, capability and, and spend on our health service. So, for example, we send x-rays off off island for professional um, identification and analysis. So what we were basically taking hours to do now we can do in minutes, you know, um, You've got uh, marketing and tourism, for example, as we said, you know, at the start of this call, 
this is the first time I've seen a three-way conference call on Centralina in somebody's house. You know, um, it's a significant change for things like that. You know, um, we do a lot of work with the UK where, um, you know, all of the parliamentarians are a part of the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association. So we do a huge amount of courses, online web conferences. All of those are now really possible. You know, um, only recently we had a web conference about the island's energy future, which was terrible quality. You know, um, you had 12 councillors sitting in the council chamber and the th it just kept breaking up all the time. You know, so... It is a real major, just as we lost Andrew there very slightly, um, but that's because he lives in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Um, even on an island um, in the middle of nowhere, there is a middle of nowhere. Um, so um, that, that's pretty good. But the, you know, and it really will help us develop it. You know, we, we have such strong ties, you know, King's birthday celebrations and things like that. You know, most of our culture is based on the UK. The UK, quite literally until this morning, we couldn't really interface with very well, you know. Um, we were almost in the facts age, you know, so it's a real game changer. This is for the, for the entire island. I know. And there's always been a discussion about, you know, uh, democratic representation of the overseas territories in the UK. And, and one question for Sandalina has always been, how shall that work when people can't access media in the UK, mm -hmm. when they can't follow, you know, political developments in the motherland? Um, so, yeah, I think this is a very important element to strengthening democracy and the ties to the motherland. Um, Andrew, you, you have any any um, you know um, visions of of how this will change life in on the island? I think there's going to be a massive social change. There we go. Yeah, I'll, here we go. <laughs> and if not, then I will will carry on. So. Um, oh no, he's back there. Sorry, I have a tree on my on my phone line or something because every time the wind blows, I'm getting these uh, <laughs> these little dropouts. So I think the the biggest change that that people will see on a daily basis is going to be that social change. Just the the simple ideas that you know we can WhatsApp call family and relatives overseas whenever we want, not just at the end of the month if we have a few spare megabytes to use up. You know, I, I was able to sit and um, play some online games with a friend in the UK as if they were in the room with me, someone I haven't been able to speak to properly for several months. And I, it, it helps make this isolated little island not feel so isolated anymore. And I think that will really help people, you know, particularly who are coming to work to, to work on the island, not feel like you're disappearing into the unknown regions of the map anymore. Yeah, this. I mean, um, this is really a game changer. Um, sounds sounds really exciting, and um, I, I look forward to hearing much more from from Centralina and and how you're joining the global information society properly. You know, without these barriers that we had so far, be it you know uh, coast wise or bandwidth wise. And um, I think we we are at a um, critical uh, time in the history of of humanity as you know all the six billion people come online and start sharing the, the knowledge and, and the culture and engage in in direct communication and um, I think today is a great day where another four and a half thousand people um, have joined this movement and uh, are now uh, receiving proper broadband uh, which, which means uh, a huge success uh, for, for all of us after almost 12 years um, that uh, we worked on that. Um, yeah, I, I uh, wish you the best of luck um, and would like um, also to uh, thank uh, a couple of people who have made this cable possible. Um, that's um, two MPs in the UK, Andrew Rossendell and Lord Balf. Uh, Tom Holby, who used to be the chief economist back in the day. Paul McGinnity, former assistant uh, chief secretary. Nicole Shamir, also former uh, economist. Uh, the late Tony Fisk, who... Uh, tra tragically uh, passed away on his way to St. Helena back in 2019. Andrew Metcalf um, of Google, who, who opened the opportunity to, to connect St. Helena to their Equiano cable, which was not planned at all. Um, and, and the many other supporters um, who, who supported this cause um, of, of connecting St. Helena. And uh, yeah, thank you, everybody. And uh, with that, uh, have a good night.
And uh, and you both uh, don't stay uh, up too long with now that you have uh, broadband internet. <laughs> Okay. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye.